Hello guys and welcome back and this is the start of a series of videos showing you guys exactly how to synchronize your NAS with popular cloud platforms such as Dropbox, Google Drive and OneDrive. We're going to try and do one provider per video to keep these vids nice and short and today we're going to talk about Acer Store and then Nimbus Store NAS series and how to synchronize this device with a Dropbox account. We've created a free Dropbox account. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to synchronize your NAS with the Dropbox account and consequently either back up the Dropbox to your NAS or your NAS to the Dropbox, depending on the space and the files that are the most important. So in order to do it with a Acer Store, Nimbus Store NAS, head over to the App Center. And from here, you can either go to All Apps or you can just look up the word Cloud. But if you go to the Acer Store Apps, straight away you can see lots of apps here for backing up to a cloud provider. Today, we're looking at Dropbox. And if you select this app, you can install it, it's very straightforward and easy in the background. And once you've installed the application, you'll find it here on the user interface. Click there and it opens up this window. From here, you have to use your login information for Dropbox, which I've already entered in the background. But if it asks me to do it again, I will do. And this is just a pop-up API, just asking for a connection request to your Dropbox. If you're not already signed in on the computer you're using, it will invite you to enter your login credentials here. Always double check that the lock symbol and dropbox.com is showing at the top. Click allow, and that will allow your Acer Store NAS to synchronize with the Dropbox account you've created with them. Now there is loads of benefits to this, don't get me wrong, if you are utilizing a NAS server, that should really be your main storage area, but it never hurts to have a multi-stage backup. And one of the ways to do that is to have an off-site cloud platform or maybe another NAS. And we will be doing an entire NAS on rsync very, very soon. So if you have multiple folders, in your Dropbox account, if you click that arrow, they will appear here. But because I've only created the one um, account and not filled it up with anything, it means that it won't appear, there aren't any more folders visible right now. Now, if you click Browse from here, here is where you can select the local synchronization folder that you want to synchronize with that Dropbox. So say I want to synchronize a test folder that I created a little while ago, for some of these videos, but actually it might make more sense to go for one that's got some stuff inside. So let's go for this uh, transcoding library here, perhaps. Is there anything in the transcoding library? Let's just go for the Plex library. Click OK, then click Next. From here, it will ask you if you want to create any file exclusions and moreover, any file limits. So any file that exceeds a certain size won't be backed up if you so choose. And you can do limitations on different kinds of files. But for now, we're just going to keep it nice and simple. And from here, we click Next. Now, here is where you can decide, one, about network limitations and the backup between Dropbox and your NAS and vice versa. Whether you want to make sure it doesn't eat up all your bandwidth up and down. And you can also decide how you want the synchronization to take place. Two-way synchronization means the folder on your Dropbox and the folder on your NAS will be identical at all times. And if you delete a file from one, it will delete it on the other. Next, you can have it so that the Dropbox folder synchronizes with the NAS, but if you delete any folders on the Dropbox, it will not delete the files on the NAS. And that means if you've only got so many gigabytes of space on Dropbox, you can keep deleting the Dropbox and still keeping all the files on the NAS. Finally, you can do it the other way around where you have a folder on the NAS that will back up to Dropbox and it will retain those files working both ways. And this can be your off NAS backup. Now it does state whether you want the files to be deleted from the source, meaning they're deleted on the destination too. If you untick this box, what that means is if you delete the file on the Dropbox in this option or on the NAS in this one, it won't delete the file off the NAS and it means you can keep a long-term collection of those files in the background, which can always be helpful. Click next and from here, we can talk about limitations and the file folders that we're utilizing. So there's everything created and from here, it's now running. 
the synchronization is happening in the background and I've only got a two gig free folder there. And that's it, our synchronization is now complete. We have got our connection there in the background and if we want to disconnect it, we can do it at any time. And right now, the synchronization is happening in the background with a synchronization of 855 folders. And that's it, it is that straightforward to create our synchronization between Dropbox and our NAS. We can even set up a schedule in other applications, but I'm gonna wrap things up here. Next up, we're gonna talk about synchronization with Google Drive and another one with OneDrive. I'll see you on those videos. Cheerio, I hope I helped.